Hey sisters, welcome to week five of how I set up Brainy Biscuit. Now in this week's video, I am talking about the strategy behind how I'm going to talk to Betty, my ideal client, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. As you know, not every week in business is rocking and it was certainly one of the quieter weeks, but the strategy behind which social media I decided to use and some of the things that I learned through looking at you YouTube videos and how-to videos is actually incredibly useful. So watch the video right the way through to the end because there's some really good hints and tips in there. But I'd be really interested to get your feedback, so let me know in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you on week six. Hey, this week it's all about social media but before I get into that I don't know if you've noticed I've managed to turn my office around a little bit so I'm getting a bit more organized so I can talk to you guys much more easily so that I don't have to get up and move everything around when I want to do some filming I've also um, bought some kit I'm now talking to you on a brand new phone which is fantastic so that helps me out enormously but today I want to talk about social media okay so what am I going to say? The first thing I'm going to say is social media is not me. From a personal point of view, I have no social media whatsoever. Um, yep, personal Facebook page, kind of, just to stay in touch with a few old school friends. But other than that, I don't use social media to connect with people. So it's just not something that's for me. And that's not because I don't understand it. I do. It's because it's just not how I run. Role, I suppose. But this new business is all about social media. It's about driving people to an ultimate goal through social platforms. So I'm going to have to get my head into social media. So just because I'm not social doesn't mean that my target client, which I have named Betty, isn't social and isn't active on social media. Now, obviously, we've got everything from Snapchat through to Twitter, through to YouTube, etc. to talk about. But what I wanted to do was to talk about the social media that Betty would use. So having spoken to some friends, some family and other ladies in business um, over 35, it came out that, you know, they don't really use things like Snapchat and TikTok. And that doesn't surprise me at at all. Um, and most of the guys that I spoke to will use Facebook, um, probably LinkedIn professionally, and some of them do use Instagram. Okay, so this gives me a base to go forward in terms of my social media strategy for Brainy Biscuit. So first things first, as I say, I didn't have a platform at all, so I'm going to have to set all of this up. And I really hate it because I'm very much aware of things like security. As I said before, I've got a previous business that is very web centric so I can talk to you all day about search engine optimization in fact I think that's probably going to be one of the videos but in terms of the social side the Facebook side the Twitter side etc it's new and it's scary because there are security implications there are security implications both personally and simply technologically so technologically for example something like TikTok it will record every single ski every single keystroke presently. I don't know if that's going to continue because obviously there's going to be a huge outcry. And if you are on Facebook, it doesn't matter if you close your Facebook account, they will find you. And that's a real world security issue because of course, if you have a stalker, they're going to be able to find you at some point. So anything that you put out there on social media is out there for the long haul people. So those are the reasons that I've not engaged with social media, but I need to do this now and I need to do it safely for my business and safely for me and my friends and family. So that's kind of a bit of a, a background issue in terms of my attitude towards social media. So um, let's touch on the social media that we are going to be talking about. I want to talk briefly about LinkedIn, I want to talk about Instagram, and I want to talk about Facebook. 
Um, I'm going to mention Twitter and I'm also going to mention YouTube and Google very quickly, but that's a different category. So let's do this all the wrong way around. Let's talk first and foremost about Twitter. Now, um, when looking at my target market, and I did quite a lot of research into this, I found that Twitter wasn't somewhere that they were happy to go. Yes, they will have Twitter accounts and yes, they will tweet, etc. But Twitter it appears to me, and this is a huge generalization, in fact the whole of this video is a huge generalization, so I can only tell you what works for me um, and what I have discovered, but Twitter very much to me is um, male centric, it's you know, guys out there tweeting. Um, yes, there are some exceptions to that, and the big exception is cats, obviously, because they run the internet, and puppies, etc. But in terms of communicating with Betty, um, yes, she might have a Twitter account, but that Twitter account is probably going to be for her dog, for when she attends the local Stitch and Bitch class, or alternatively, it's just so she can watch kittens. Um, I know I fall into that category. So yes, I have set up a Twitter account for the business but I'll be honest my dog Puddles is currently running that and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, I think I should just say that she's joining me in the office today so if you hear any snortling or uh, belly noises it's not me it's her she's actually with me down here and I'll do a photo in a minute to prove it. So having looked at my market I really don't think Twitter is going to drive a huge amount of business for me. Now, it does drive business. So if you think about people like James Clear, fantastic. He uses Twitter excellently, and it obviously works for him. Another guy out there is Carlos Gill. Got a lot of respect for both of those guys, and they use Twitter as a business tool. But for my audience, I really don't think at this stage that Twitter's going to be the thing. So what does that leave me with? Well, that leaves me with LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. As I say, I'll come back to YouTube in and Pinterest even in a moment. So let's just look at LinkedIn for a moment. Um, LinkedIn is very much a professional network, it's very much a business network. So if you are already in some kind of business, whether that be your own personal hairdressing business or a coaching business, a consulting business, uh, whatever, you probably have a LinkedIn profile. And if you are a career lady, you've probably definitely got a LinkedIn profile, either personally or through your company or with your company. And it is a really good way of tracking your skills and finding people with similar skills, similar interests interests, etc. in a business sense. And as I've talked about um, in other environments, you know, it's really good networking environment. So yes, you have to be on LinkedIn. It's a professional business networking environment. So if you're going to reach people, you do need a LinkedIn profile. And a lot of my audience, a lot of my Bettys will already have a LinkedIn profile. But that doesn't mean they use social media on a day-to-day -day basis. That doesn't mean that they're social media animals. It means that it's a business tool that they dive into when they get into the office and switch off from potentially when they get home. I'm being, again, very general here. But LinkedIn is an enormously useful tool because it is very business focused. It talks about business stuff. You can um, put out business articles. It's a great place. So LinkedIn is something that I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be doing much more of. Um, I'm obviously going to create a LinkedIn group so that I can chat to my Bettys because what they say to me is the heart and soul of my business. And there are some quirks in LinkedIn that I have discovered over this last week. So for example, um, LinkedIn has, uh, you can put post articles on there, but like most social media platforms, it wants you to stay in the LinkedIn universe. So if you put um, a hyperlink out from LinkedIn to your website where you've posted an article, for example, no one's probably ever going to see that. Or if you're posting um, a, a link to your YouTube video, no one's probably ever going to see that because LinkedIn wants
wants to keep you in the LinkedIn universe, which is understandable. So if you want to communicate those kind of things with your LinkedIn audience, it's about actually writing an article and putting a little note at the bottom or suggesting that they look for other social media platforms in your bio. So the way all this social media hangs together, it all works very differently. And I'm sure there are people out there that are going to go, you don't know a thing about LinkedIn. And I don't at this stage, but I know it's an important medium. And I know I've learned some stuff over the last week. And I know it's something I'm going to investigate much more fully because there are lots of things you can do with LinkedIn. So I've put up my LinkedIn profile. It's got a very brief bio because I don't actually think all of the stuff that I did when I worked in the communications industry is totally relevant for my new Bettys. Um, and I don't actually think that my, uh, my tourism business in Spain is particularly relevant for my new Bettys. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to talk about all of that, but I don't think it's actually going to point to who I am on LinkedIn in Brainy Biscuit. So yes, lots to learn, but I've set up a LinkedIn profile. It's a relatively simple process to do this. As I say, you've probably already got one, ladies. Um, it's a relatively simple process. You need a photo, you need a bit of a bio, and it's actually one of the better social media platforms. And it, it takes you through a structured way to get from A to B to create your profile. And you can go back in and you can add bits later. You can add more bits. You can say, no, you don't want to add that. So LinkedIn is a business platform. It's going to be a hugely important platform for me. I don't know how much I'm going to use it. So for example, when I worked in the recruitment business, when I had a recruitment company, LinkedIn was a huge huge, huge source um, for me, both in terms of clients and candidates. So, you know, I really got to the, into the nuts and bolts of it then. But in terms of Brainy Biscuit, LinkedIn probably is going to be a great source, but I'm not going to dive into all of its features this time. So that puts LinkedIn in a box because that one's slightly different. Now, what did I do? Well, I have spent this week looking at other people with similar profiles to mine, people who want to communicate with a very female audience, a very business-centric female audience, people who help entrepreneurs, people who help women with their careers. And I've looked at what they do in social media, what they do on social media, how their profiles are constructed and how their communication is curated. So I've looked at lots of different individuals on Instagram, for example. I've looked at lots of individuals on Facebook um, and I've looked at lots of individuals on YouTube and what I've managed to ascertain through all of this is that there are very, some, some very specific things that seem to work. So I've looked for people whose content relates to my kind of audience and I've looked at their their posts and their videos and seeing what's worked for them, both in terms of the content and in the terms of the look and feel. Because there is no point in reinventing the wheel. Yes, I'm going to do this my way and yes, my content will be mine and yes, I want to help my, uh, my audience my way. I want them to engage with me and I want to engage with them. But there are people out there who have done this before. So let's learn from them. And by that, I don't mean copy them. I mean, take the good things that they have done and apply them into my business in my way. And if someone wants to copy what I'm doing, that's great. Go, sister, because it means I'm out there and you like my stuff and I'm going to take that as a huge compliment. So I've looked at what their content is and I've looked at how they approach their audience and I've looked at what their profiles say. And there are some really good people out there that I have managed to think that they could be something that I would want to mirror and imitate in my business. Um, so that's what I've done so that I have now got a template for my Instagram, um, my Facebook and my YouTube. Now I'm going to come back to YouTube in just a second. So let's talk just for a moment about Instagram. Um, there are some great um, organisations out there who are targeting women. There are people like Boss Babe, people like the Female Entrepreneur Association, uh, people like Kim Jimenez. They do a great job at targeting women and go and check them out because we're all in slightly different spaces. The thing with Instagram is that I don't think my bet is 
My current bet is really use Instagram a lot. If they do, it's probably to take photos of their kids or to stay in touch with their kids. It's probably not a, a business or a news information tool for them. Whereas for a younger generation, it is. But I want to be on Instagram because ladies in their late 30s certainly are on Instagram. And I want to catch them young because, you know, I want to die before they do. But um, Instagram is a great communications tool medium. It's a great broadcast medium. It's very difficult to get into a conversation on Instagram because it's really a one-to-one -one communications medium, generally speaking. Yes, you can post comments. Yes, you can like things. Yes, you can build that kind of community. But if you want to have an in-depth conversation, that's the only real way to do it is through direct message. So it's a little bit like a broadcast medium. Now, one of the things that I've learned about Instagram is that it pops up, you know, if you've got your Instagram app out and you're, and you're looking and you're scrolling through it and you see something you like, something pops into your feed, fantastic. Now, if you like something, then you're probably going to follow the rabbit down the hole and you're probably going to look at that person's profile. And here's a big lesson that I learned. If someone goes across to your profile and they find a whole mishmash of stuff it might just put them off. That doesn't mean your content's not great, it just means that it's difficult to navigate. So one of the things that I learned with some of the ladies that uh, ladies groups that I'm following and some of the ladies that I'm following, because I'm also following uh, people like Marie Folio and, and Kim Dan Jimenez and obviously, you know, Tony Robbins, some of the things that I've learned by looking at some of their stuff is that a wonderfully curated Instagram feed Look, not only looks pretty, which I really like, but it makes it easy to communicate the points and principles that you want to communicate. So if you have something that is beautifully curated and beautifully designed, it makes it easier for you to relate to it and it makes it easier for you to get your point across. Now on my Instagram feed, what I've decided to do is I have decided that I'm going to do quite a lot of motivational uh, and business quotes specifically designed at you ladies. Um, I'm going to make them a little bit sassy, a little bit sassy and a little bit contentious because that's what seems to work best and I'm not here just to be a me too. So you're going to get the real me and I want the real you and I expect that is probably a little bit sassy. So I want to get my message across and because of that I've created a simple template that kind of goes white pink, white pink in terms of some of the quotes that I want to put out there that will make you stop and think. So you sat there in the office having a coffee and you think actually what am I going to do? I'm going to look at Instagram. Oh, do you know that's true? You know, what is when someone asks you what your favourite position is, I always say CEO, for example. So it get, makes you stop and think um, just that little bit or it gives you a moral boost a motivational boost it gives you something to hang on to for that day so how the feed actually looks is enormously important because people will go back and look and that's great and that's actually um, what we want them to do so that really is kind of um, Instagram. So I, um, you know, I've learned what works in the profile by looking at some of the individ other individuals in the space. I've looked at curating the platform so that it looks good and it's easy to use. Um, and you know, I've looked at some of the content that seems to get engagement. Now that is the other thing with Instagram. Um, I personally don't want thousands of followers. It's not vanity for me, and certainly because I'm not a social media girl. Um, but I do want followers that I can engage with. So all of this for me is what's going to drive individuals to my Instagram feed who feel that we have something in common, who feel that we can engage together. Because I do want to start a conversation. I want to start a community. So it's really important that the people who come onto my Instagram understand that and feel that they can engage with me. So those are the kind of things that I've learned about Instagram. Instagram. So I've designed my profile to try and make it as easy as possible to understand who I am and what I do and how to get in touch with me. I've curated the image. I've tried to make my language as simple as possible in terms of my audience, making it as clear as I can. So that's kind of where I'm at with Instagram 
currently. Um, I am going to be doing things like I'm going to be putting some of my video snippets out there so you can see what goes on in other parts of the business on YouTube, for example. Um, and I'm also going to be putting some photos out there in terms of a little bit of lifestyle and a little bit of behind the scenes. But as a general rule, that, that's how my feed's going to go. So taking that one down away, Instagram is good. I think it's going to be a, for a younger part of uh, my betties. Um, older ladies, when I ask them what they did, um, they do two things. They go to Google. So my website is hugely important. And I love, love, love my website. Go and look at my website. I'm so proud of it. Um, the guy who works for me in another business has designed it. He's been amazing, bearing in mind I've asked him to do things he's never done before. And he's had to look at photos of me constantly. So I love my website. Please go and look at it, brainybiscuit.com. Um, so, yeah, women um, who are probably over 35, 40, that sort of thing, will go to Google, and that's where my website is really important. And I don't know if you heard that, but that was the dog snorkeling. Um, and the other thing they do is ask their husband, but as soon as I can't tap into their husband, um, the next thing on the list is Facebook. Now, um, building a Facebook business page, <coughs> excuse me, is a, I found that a huge challenge. I've actually found Instagram and Twitter a little easier. Um, but Facebook is a hugely important part of this business, or is going to be a hugely important part of this business. Because the difference for me with Facebook is that's where you can build a true community. So not only are older ladies going to be on there because they have their friends, they have their families. You know, families now are much more distributed, so that's a really good place to connect with people who are not necessarily in the same location, same country. Um, and it also has some great groups. So you can look at over 50s groups, or you can look at local business groups, or you can look at buying and selling groups. So Facebook is a great place to build a proper community. So I've had to set up a personal Facebook page and then set up a business Facebook page. And Facebook doesn't guide you as easily so, uh, as, as LinkedIn does, for example, through the whole setup. It doesn't say start here and finish here. And depending on what your page looks like and what you're trying to do, how it presents is different the, the the back um room stuff is different for different people so i am struggling with facebook a little bit but i have now got my personal facebook page up there and connected with everybody i know and i've now got my business facebook page up there and i've created a business a group within that facebook um it's going to be a hugely important tool for me because it is a great platform to build this, this community so we can all have a chat and all have a conversation and we can share our ideas and our thoughts and best practice and what works. So I'm still working my way through Facebook a little bit. Um, but, you know, it is a really important social media platform for me. So the ones that are going to work for me are going to be Facebook and Instagram and uh, obviously my website. And if I can get to talk to all of your husbands too, I'll obviously tell them to make you look at Facebook and Instagram, etc. So those are the three social media platforms that I think are really, really important for me. Um, now, obviously, if you're watching this, um, I've managed to get to grips with YouTube. I'm going to talk about YouTube um, a little bit later on because it is very different. But YouTube and Pinterest are actually not social media in the truest sense of the word. They are search engines a little bit like Google. So how you work with them is slightly different. But yes, my audience, my betties also told me that YouTube was somewhere they would go. So I referred to Stitch and Bitch earlier. So if you're wanting to look for a new pattern, a new knitting pattern, a new crocheting pattern or how to do something, or you want to look at new stitching or you're a hairdresser that needs to look at new styles or products and you're um, in your 30s, 40s or 50s, that's when you might go to YouTube to look for a how-to video. Um, and it's one of the things that I did. So, you know, the beginning of this week when I actually started to lay out what social media that would be needed, um, one of the first things I actually did was to go to YouTube and look at how-tos. Yeah, so, you know, things like Facebook, I actually go to YouTube to look at a how-to to create the business page or how to get my YouTube working. I go to YouTube to look at how to get YouTube working, which seems a little circular to me. 
Um, but that's what I did, you know, and YouTube is really useful for that. So my YouTube channel is going to be a lot of how to's to how to make life easier for all of us, I think is a really good place to start. But I'm going to talk about YouTube in a separate video. Pinterest, I know I love Pinterest. I can sit and look at pins all day. Um, and I know that a lot of my friends and ladies that are my betties look at Pinterest. Pinterest is an interesting one because it gives you a lot of information in a really accessible format. Um, but it's actually search engine driven rather than social media driven. So yes, you can share boards and you can create boards and you can share boards with an, in other individuals. But in terms of social media, in terms of actually connecting and um, exchanging thoughts and views, etc., Pinterest is a much more one directional um, environment. So again, maybe talk about Pinterest a little bit later. So that's what I have done this week. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk about each of these individual areas. So, the, so you know, the, the LinkedIn's, the Facebook's, the YouTube's, the Instagram's in much more detail in other videos. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting when I was looking at all of this and bearing in mind how cynical I am personally about social media was how it has created a safe place for women to discuss business and to discuss the things that are unique to women in business, like work-life balance and family and all of that kind of thing. Because if you're in business, it really surprised me that women who are in business feel, I suppose, insecure or don't feel that they have a platform. Because instead of just putting hashtag business, it's hashtag women in business. Instead of just putting entrepreneur, which is a non-sexual um, word, it doesn't say male or female, you, know, you have to put women entrepreneurs. And it was really eye-opening that we guys actually feel that we need to create or specify that we're women in business. And that to me is both a huge opportunity, um, terribly sad, and also really heartwarming that there is actually a community of women in business out there. So it actually is important that we have social media so that women in business because they feel separate to being in business, have this place to communicate and to talk and to chat. So I just thought that was really, really interesting. So I'm going to talk about all of this much more later on, because this week has been very much, you know, who does what, how do they do it, how can I learn best practice? How can I set up all of these accounts? What are they going to look like? What content am I going to put on all of these accounts? What do I expect my audience to achieve from joining me on all of these accounts? And how will it help my business? But the actual nuts and bolts of creating these accounts, you know, I have been tearing my hair out. Um, and I think that I can stop you tearing your hair out. So if I can help you do that, we'll do videos that are much more specific to all of those. So that'll be later on. That's my thoughts, I think, for today. Um, if I think of anything else in the meantime, I'm going to come back and tag it on to the end of this video. But other than that, I guess I will see you next week. I guess by this point I've worked out YouTube. So hope to see you soon, ladies.